Welcome to ProWebcast News, where we bring you daily industry updates. Today is Thursday, October 15th, and you're watching the Afternoon Update with Paul Wilson. Today's news is sponsored by Covenant Reliance Producers. We build success stories. For more information, please visit www.crproducers.com. Now for today's headlines. A recent survey by the Spectrum Group shows that a growing number of mass affluent individuals are leaving their full-service broker and heading to independent financial planners. The survey found that just 22% of those with a net worth of between $100,000 and $1 million now use a broker as their primary financial advisor, down significantly from 30% just last year. The largest number seem to be defecting to independent advisors, with 22% of mass affluent investors now using independent advisors compared with 20% in 2008. According to Spectrum, this is the first time in the eight years they've tracked the data that brokers were not the primary option for this group of investors. In a statement, George H. Walper, Jr., president of Spectrum Group, said, quote, whether linked to perceptions of financial institutions or a need to reassess their investing, this shift coincides with a strong move toward conservative investing by the mass affluent, unquote. In housing news, foreclosure filings fell in the U.S. for the second consecutive month in September, but are still near record highs, according to a report released today by RealtyTrack. Foreclosure filings, which include mortgage default notices, house auctions, and home repossessions by banks, were reported on 343,638 properties during September, a decrease of 4% from August, but 29% higher than the same period last year. In a sign that actions to prevent foreclosures could be making a difference, September's decrease was significantly larger than August's month-on-month drop of less than 1%. Still, the monthly total was the third highest total seen since RealtyTrack began reporting figures in early 2005, trailing only July and August of this year. In investment news, Citigroup Inc. posted a quarterly per share loss due to $8 billion of credit losses, bringing the bank's sustained profitability into question. While many analysts had expected an even larger loss, the bank still saw a decrease in shares in morning trading. Citigroup posted net income of $101 million, but posted a loss from continuing operations of $529 million before taxes. Overall, the bank has posted over $100 billion of write-downs and consumer credit losses since the beginning of the credit crisis, and posted over $37 billion of net losses between the fourth quarter of 2007 and the fourth quarter of last year. I'm Paul Wilson, and thanks for watching ProWebcast News. For more in-depth news and features, visit producersweb.com.